Auzu billahi minash-shaitanir racim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nutur arba inu tulata kaf tu khalusu kusiyam hadd majlis ya Allah ta'ala shuri. Madya sediya Rasul-i Karim ya Habib al-Azim. Madya sediya Sultan al-Ali ibn Shahid al-Fayz al-Rastani. Mash Muhammad Azim Hakani wa Sheikh Sham Kabani Sheikh Hadd Kabani Sheikh Muhammad Azim. Bi madadakum min nazarikum hadd majlis ya Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي رسول أول الأمر منكم and reminder always for myself يا ربي أنا أبد كل أجيس وضعيف ومسكين وظالم وجهل and by the grace of Allah عز وجل that I'm still in existence we took a path in which to be nothing in this holy month the twelfth month of the lunar calendars this is the twelfth month. Zul Hajj and we took last night that we look for guidance always first from Holy Qur'an. It dresses our path and blesses our path. It is the reality when Alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan that Allah taught the Qur'an to the soul and then made a body, a vehicle to place this holy soul into that vehicle. And Surat al-Yusuf is the twelfth surah and Allah described, this is a beautiful surah, this is a beautiful qissa, means this is a reality of our path that we give it in a very short summary, doesn't have to be too long and too complicated, very easy path to understand. The last night we covered that Sayyidina Yusuf is telling his father who is a prophet and has eleven brothers who are prophets. And telling his father that I've had a dream that the sun and the moon and eleven planets have made sujood, have bowed down to me. And the father asked that, don't tell your brothers they're going to cause you harm. And Sayyidina Yusuf was thrown into a well by his brothers. Eventually their jealousy overtook them and the feeling of favour and the Beautific tajalli dressing Sayyidina Yusuf the brothers couldn't handle it. So life is filled with hasad. Even if you're a prophet there's going to be hasad. These are eleven prophets of Allah are jealous and throw their brother into a hole. That chant last night we stopped only at that and that's the whole understanding of tafakkur. Who knows himself will know his Lord that Allah that in today's day how to bring the surah of what Allah wants for us, Prophet wants for us and the Ulul Am, what they are responsible for us is this path. When Allah wants to guide the servant, doesn't matter who the father, who the brother and who the mother is, Allah's guidance is always going to be unique and is going to be uniquely guided and everyone's destination is different. Everyone's level of knowledge is different and from that understanding you have to be put into a hole and that hole is isolation and solitude, tafakkur and meditation and contemplation. That I can make a space within my life like that hole that I'm cut off from everything and that I have to learn to who knows himself will know his Lord. The hadith of Prophet comes at that point and teaches who knows himself will know his Lord. This moment that Allah has given for you to be isolated is a time in which Allah wants you to reflect. Reflect to know yourself so that you may know what governs you. This word of Rabb in Surat al-Yusuf. Surat al-Yusuf is filled with the secret of Alif Lam Ra and rububiyah, lordship, which is not Allah Allah is the creator, lordship is that which governs you. Before they used to say, Rabb al-Bayt, the lord of the house, Rabb al-Shar, the lord of the city. Then they manipulated the language, came back and said, no this is only in reference to Allah it changes the whole reality of that surah. That Allah teaching through that understanding, you have to know your Lord. You have to know what governs you in life before you can submit yourself to the Lord Most High. 
Everything on this earth is claiming lordship over us. Bad desires, vices, anybody that is stuck within a vice that they cannot stop, it's a lord over you. It shows its dominance and it is making you to submit. Even the anger and qadab can be lord over insan and push him towards fires and difficulty. So it means every characteristic is important. Every aspect of ourself is that when we begin to look at ourself in our tafakkur and our meditation, what is governing me? Before I can claim Allah that I'm submitting to Allah what are all my bad characteristics, all my vices and desires, all those that are governed by shaitan that I'm submitting to and not submitting to Allah that's why the whole. That lifetime is the whole, barely people come out of that whole. Few enter and very few ever come out once they enter. Because lifelong tafakkur, lifelong contemplation. Before I can claim to be worshipping Allah talking on Allah's behalf, I have to understand myself. Who am I and what am I submitting to? If I fought those things that make me to submit to it, that is the jihad al-akbar, the great struggle. The Prophet told the companions, this fighting on the outside is one level. But the greater battle lies ahead and that's the fighting of the character, the fighting of ourself, our bad desires. There's no victory, there's no pot of gold, there's nothing other than attacking yourself, pushing yourself, humiliating yourself. Not to let the self to win, to claim victory over you and you are completely defeated. At that time imagine a shaitan is riding you and you're merely a donkey for the devil because he's about to put a, a the, the uh, saddle. saddle, he's fighting with you, he's got the saddle on you, he's about to put the bridle in the mouth and begin to ride. If he can take that servant and ride him, that's it, that servant is under satanic influence. Our life was to fight that, it's a continuous battle that, no, no, I'm not going to definitely let shaitan put his saddle on me and, and put his bridle into my mouth to make my direction under satanic influence. So this is the whole concept of tafakkur. And when the next section that comes is that Sayyidina Yusuf was crying in the hole and making his najat and praying, the Ya Rabbi I'm realizing my, my difficulty and the situation that I'm in that grant me a najat. And Allah describes now a caravan is approaching. These are the caravans of hope and not despair. Although one person once said, this is a caravan of despair because he un didn't understand the quote. The Sufis and the people of Tasawwuf and Taskia is the caravan of hope and they take away all despair. And the, the, the saying that they had, come, come, come again. Even if you broke your vow a thousand times, yet come again. And Allah describes, this caravan came to the well, they sat down and they noticed that Sayyidina Yusuf is in there and said, perchance we take him out, is a barakah, a blessing, we'll get something from this reality. Took him and began to leave. Right at that point that is our tariq. Because when Allah is giving a beautiful story there's no time, it's not about just one story, it's about our existence right now. Allah is just saying, if you're truly going to isolate yourself and truly want to come against all your bad desires and you're sincere in your prayers that, guide me, guide me, there's a caravan coming to get you. You prayed to be here, you prayed for guidance and if you didn't your ancestors prayed. 
somebody in your ancestry pray that guide my jat, guide my descendants to the way of truth and to the way of realities and the caravan appears. When the caravan appears means the shaykh would take that one out of the well. At that point it's the responsibility of the shaykh to guide that student. Guide the student and tarbiyah the student because this caravan is going into the presence where a king will come to buy him. Means there's a caravan that comes from Surat al Yusuf. Anybody can go home and read Surat al Yusuf in your own language so that you understand the flavor and the verses in which Allah is giving to us. So don't think I'm just going to throw you in a hole. There's a caravan coming if you're clever enough to understand. That one that coming is responsible to take you out of that darkness, out of that difficulty and begin to train you. But the characteristic of the servant that is going to be accompanying that caravan, he has to be miskeen. Because he was a big prophet, probably wealthy family, Allah cut him off and threw him in a hole. So all the wealth in the world not going to help you now. So he's, he's cut off, his yateem, a father and eleven brothers who are prophets, doesn't matter how great your family is, how all interrelated you are, how everything is, Allah said, when I want to guide you, you're in the hole, isolated, cut off. So they become yateem because this is the biggest complaint, you go, oh I have so many family and they don't agree, they don't understand, they don't know what I'm doing, they don't even like to look at me and talk to me anymore. Well so then congratulations because what they know of you is not maybe the image and the reality that Allah wounds from you because if Allah dress you maybe they never like to see their face again. Because we have a certain image amongst people, a certain reality that they were comfortable with. As long as you did what they did, they were good with you. As soon as you go to guidance, say, what's wrong with you? What, what's all these things you want to do to yourself? Why you don't come and play with us anymore? So of course they're not going to have anything familiar. You become yateem, you have nobody, you're cut off from everything. You become maskeen, I don't have what I had, I, I had all my plans in life, I, I was going to do all these things, all been cut off, I was going to be famous, cut off, I was going to be a big businessman, cut off, whatever the person was dreaming. Maybe Allah didn't have that dream for you, it'll come back later what Allah wants for you. But we're still just at the hole. That when that well is in there, there's a shaykh that's going to be coming to get us. When he gets us, he's going to train us. That the condition in which the shaykh is going to, it's an instant of a second of a, of a story but it's an expanded reality. That for you to accompany the shaykh, you have to have the character of miskeen. Because somebody who's been in a hole and thrown into a hole, he doesn't have a lot of opinions and he doesn't keep putting his opinion or her opinion in everything. They don't know anything because they have to pretend to themselves, it's like I was in a hole. I've been isolated, my Lord threw me in there and I don't know how to take care of myself, I don't know how to reach that reality, I want to be nothing. Nasiyan mansiyan. Oh, I wish it not be that I was a thing unknown, unknown. You have to negate ourselves. We negate I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And I admit, no, no, Ya Rabbi, I'm miskeen. Miskeen in the sense that I, I don't know anything. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know anything. I don't want anything. I want to be nothing. I'm yateem. I don't need all those people to keep calling and talking to me. I need to be isolated to reach the reality. And then asiran, asiran because the condition the, the caravan took him as a captive. They didn't ask, would you like to come out of the well or would you like to come with us, we're going to go, go to the, through the desert. 
No, no, took him as a captive, tied up a Prophet of Allah So anyone who doesn't like the path and want too much of their opinion, too much talking, too many words, too much expression of who they are and what their character that the path is teaching us, not me, Allah putting in Qur'an. The path is teaching, be nothing, be nothing. Accompany them asira. Even their songs that we have to be asir, we have to be a captive in our way. So they come up like a captive, they don't say nothing, they don't know anything, they don't want anything and a lifelong process of trying that, trying not to put their will where their will was not Allah's will. When we become nothing, want nothing and make ourselves to be in that condition, Allah can begin to dress the Divine will and that caravan is taking and takes that servant all the way to the bazaar. Means that that caravan is on a path to the kingdom of Allah because at that bazaar a king appeared. A king appeared and saw the lights. Means that Allah knows everything's been written, everything destined, these caravans should all be going to the same king. The caravan doesn't take anyone to themselves and then go out into the village by themselves. All these shiukh are supposed to take their students to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad who the Qur'an refers to Malik al-Aziz. Means that in the bazaar a king by the name of Malik al-Aziz, Malik that he's a king, Aziz that nothing escapes his power. Sifat al-Aziz is that is whatever Allah wants is going to happen with Sifat al-Aziz. They didn't use a random name when Allah naming the characters of this play. That this Malik his Sifat is Aziz upon him. Whatever I want is what he wants, whatever he says is going to happen. That king came in and said, oh, we will take this one. Means that every student has been picked by Prophet There's no way that you're watching or that you're sitting and that you're not a part of the caravan. No, I, I just came for chocolate, I don't know what this caravan was, I don't even know who, who even stopped here. It's just a matter of how much you're fighting inside. Caravan is the caravan, the Malik he already bought, said, this one is mine, I'm going to put my nazar on them and I want to raise them, I want to dress them, I want to bless them. So our whole life is about the state. We can only eat from that reality if we're continuously yateem, that I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm nothing, I'm miskeen. No matter what Allah gives, don't let the wealth of, of your possessions, the wealth of your status make you to become arrogant. All Sahabi were wealthy, none of them were poor. Sayyidina Usman al-Qani, Jami al-Qur'an and Majid was the wealthiest, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq the wealthiest but they used their wealth in the way of Allah Their wealth was a servant to them, haq. Not that they were a servant to their wealth that they hoarded in their bank accounts. We're talking about people with millions in their bank accounts. They post the pictures all day long, they have 10 cars, 20 cars, they have garages filled with cars, all of which will be ropes upon the neck of the servant if they're not doing anything in the way of Allah So it means they teach that do for Allah be of service. So that they're not a servant to that but that wealth, those possessions, everything is a servant to them. This is their whole way until the king buys them. Means when they begin to be taught the realities and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they're entering now into the heavenly kingdom. Inside the heavenly kingdom are all the realities in which Allah wants for that servant. That you learn those characteristics to have because you're going to need them inside the kingdom. So to say that Yusuf enters into the kingdom to be of service, he's having a big problem with the wife of the king. 
she's coming all over him. And everyone in the kingdom is immensely attracted to him. Sayyidina Yusuf is the beautific dress of Sayyidina Muhammad If within the kingdom these murids, these shaykhs, their juzba and their lights are so beautific and so filled with barakah. The woman represents dunya and that the dunya within this kingdom of Allah is going to run after the servant. Where before you were running for your dunya, as soon as you enter into the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad which are all the Prophets. We have Sayyidina Adam, Sayyidina Nuh, Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Isa all 124,000 Prophets in this kingdom. We're talking about the kingdom of Allah Almighty. That inside that kingdom for the servants who are entering in to be under the khidmat and service of the king, not that on the outside in the barn, but this king chose you to come inside. I think you're going to be of service to me. Could you imagine not answering his call and running away? Out of seven billion people, how he chose you? He didn't choose everybody. He chose you, come in. You're going to be maybe a barakah and a blessing, means the khidmat and your ability will be used for Prophet And it's going to bring a barakah to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Don't sit on all your eggs and do nothing. You've been chosen. The call has come, Samina wa ta'ana. We heard the call and we are coming. What was the purpose of all the labaik? What was the labaik? You thought you only heard to go to the Kaaba? Go spin seven times and go home now and do whatever you want? The labaik just started at that point. <laughs> that did you hear the call? Did you really hear the call? Means then their whole wujud is to move towards Prophet What am I going to do to get the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad in my life? With my life, with my time, with my possessions, with all my abilities, all of them on the table for the benefit and for the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad to be watching. So means they entered into that kingdom dressed by the reality of that kingdom and then that dunya keeps chasing after. And at that time Sayyidina Yusuf the lady grabbed Sayyidina Yusuf and then the king appeared. Means that this blessing they're dressing upon you, if this dunya grabs you it's going to be a difficulty for you. Sayyidina Yusuf said, no look, she grabbed me from behind, I was running from her. Not that I was running to her, she was running after me, means this dunya was running after. They run after, why? Because they want to be of service to Prophet When they see that Allah loves you and that Prophet loves you, of course the dunya wants to throw everything at your feet. To be of khidmat also to the Divine the Presence. And Sayyidina Yusuf's warning is, no, that she came from behind and attacking me. At that time Sayyidina Yusuf asked, Ya Rabbi, I think it's better that I go to jail now. I've said many years this qasa and you never know who understands and begins to click into their heart. The first hole you were thrown into, the second phase is you have to ask, you have to have your spiritual practices, you have to make your tafakkur, you have to make your contemplation, we have to do all our practices and then we have to keep asking, Ya Rabbi put me into seclusion. Put me into isolation, bring out this ni'mat, bring out this blessing within me, nawat al-arba'een, nawat al-itikaf, nawat al-khalwa, suluq, siyam fi hadil majlis. We keep making intention, Ya Rabbi I'm making intention, I'm making intention. Even if every day slowly, slowly it's like an itikaf for me or khalwa for me but I want to reach. And seven years he put himself into seclusion and isolation. At which time Allah brought him out and when Sayyidina Yusuf came out, he came out with the mulk of all of Misr. But he was established with a mighty authority.
the sun, the moon and eleven planets were put under his authority and when he met with his father, his father made sujood and kissed him. So anyone who doesn't understand Qur'an and the adab of Qur'an that a Prophet of Allah bowed down to his son who became a higher level Prophet of Allah and Allah showing that's ihtiram. There was sujood al ihtiram not for worshipness. People here don't even want to show respect to another person and they think they're following Allah and following Qur'an well they wrote they read the wrong Qur'an. <laughs> Twelfth surah will teach you about bowing down. He bowed down. Why? He realized what station that he achieved. He achieved the authority of the sun, the moon and the eleven planets were put under the feet of Sayyidina Yusuf Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.